3D6 down the line. Okay, that is episode 64 in the books. Left it on quite a cliffhanger, but you have only yourself to blame. So <laughs> I think it's going swimmingly so far. I, I don't know that we've ever been this fucking boned before. <laughs> in this game. And you've been boned it's a lot. Astonishing. That's astonishing. And it always uh, seems to be on this level. It is. Yes. That, that is my it point is, um, earlier. So I'll tell you, 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 you had excellent plans. Like every, everything was very, very well thought out. They're like, I, I can't poke holes in anything. Even it was pure random chance how things could have gone down completely differently. And that was literally when you walked into the well of light for the first time and you chose to go south rather than north. That was a huge, huge turning point in how everything just sort of um, uh, steam steamrolled after that. Sure. I'll just put it put it that way. But it was uh, li literally like no fault of your own. Like you you had multiple choices. You didn't hear anything from either direction, sure. and you you decided to go towards Gar or towards the library or whatever. So I, for one, have no regrets, and still think we're going to succeed. <laughs> you never know. I don't. I refuse to believe we're boned. I think we have him. In our trap. Just you wait. Sure. I mean, here's the thing about it. I think that we actually have, with the shotgun, a decent chance of really dinking up Garelad's plans, right? When we did it in that one room where there was like all those monkeys and one of the four-armed baboons, we almost killed that dude, right? We almost killed that big one and we killed all the little ones. And I just feel like if we and, and Garelad, man, I mean, hit points being what they are in this game, maybe we maybe we won't drop him with a cone of cold. But damn, like, I mean, you get that thing full blast in the face and for somehow fail your save or whatever, he could be totally screwed. And and so, yes, David, I think to your point, we have a chance here. I just I don't see us escaping afterwards. That's, that's kind of like the only the well, only real problem. The yeah, the gamble we're taking, which is a gamble that is very foolish, right? But part of the fun is that all or nothing killing Garalad will have some consequential effect on the apes. And that is a huge assumption. If it is not true, we're dead. Right. Garalad's dead, which is a win if we're talking about like the macro. Ted gets out as a spider, right? Like, Mike and David die again. <laughs> what else is new? Right. Um, but that's a, that's like uh, I hate to say, it, but that's like a good. That's not a that's not a total failure. Now, if he does have an influence on them, that's great. But that means that we like I, I do think the ice one's very powerful. I'm not going to use it unless your assassination attempt fails. Right. I don't think we do a single act of aggression until we have tried the Garalad move because everything else will create distance between us, including just via apes protecting him. We're never going to get there. Right. right? So it, it, it mandates essentially like if we can't wait it out here, they haven't closed the door still. We just, we walk into his bedroom and we stay there invisible. Right. Until he comes back several hours later, which is foolish, but like you hide under his bed. I don't know. Right. This is it's silly. But it's something to consider because we know that the alarm is just continuous while the door's open. Right. And at some point, they have to turn the alarm off. Right. So right. Like, right. Can, can the apes turn their alarm off? Or is Garalad the only person that can do it because it's a magical alarm? At which point, Garalad has to come here. Yeah, yeah. Period. So like getting... There are, there are a lot of very awesome distractions yeah. that we that we could pursue, but the reality is like every single one of them ruins the best leverage we have because we're basically dead regardless, unless we do a full retreat to the pyramid right now. Well, let's right? let's be very specific about the yeah. actual situation we're in. Sure, sure. There are six monkeys in the hallway with us, right? Yeah. And if we take them out, which you could with the wand, your invisibility is gone. Yeah, which is why I'm not gonna do it. Right. But how long eventually, if those guys are just posted up there and they're just there for hours, I'm going to run out of invisibility. You might run out of invisibility because they all might be like, OK, I got to go or something else might happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, what I would say, and this is really a like a like a loyalty check thing, maybe or like a John's uh, arbitration thing. But like you have two more charges on the cloak. 
Mm -hmm. Just like you didn't use it until they came in. You don't have, if we go in, anyways, using that, not that we should, but hypothetically, right? Two baboons, four baboons, however many baboons go in to see if Ted's in the other room, right? There's a window or not, depending on what happens, to move into his room before they close the door. For me, at least, maybe both of us. Um, we can hang out there. Like I said, you can be under his bed. I'm infinitely invisible as long as they don't leave. I don't think knowing what our plan was and knowing that no one can enter into the room or want to enter the room with Niall and Elizabeth, that they would bail, right? I think they would squat out for a while. But again, what's reasonable? That's like a, that's a John thing. Now, point being is like they knew the, the, what the plan was enough to know that they wouldn't like spend 30 minutes and leave. They might spend a few hours and then leave, right? But there's no imminent threat to them because no one's coming that way. And they know they can go through the portal, right? Which is something we discussed with them at the time. Right. That's, I don't know. This, this gets too mad. And my point yeah. is like, I, I'm, I, you know, there's, it's nuanced. But Nyal, um, Nyal and Elizabeth are, are probably not going to go anywhere because Nyal is intimately f familiar exactly. with, with uh, the layout. And he uh, knows for a fact what happens in that room. And he knows yeah. that the baboons generally tend to stay away from it. So exactly. even though Elizabeth is sort of stationed immediately outside, the baboons don't like to come that direction. And Nyal knows it. So um, they're 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 going to get worried, and they're they're at a certain point they're going to assume that something bad happened to you, sure. but um, you um, but yeah you're going to be in the dark as far as what they yes. decide to do, and and the way we would know that they made that decision is I would become visible again, right, right, well, like Niall would, Niall would get his vision back. Th that's true. That's true. A very good point. So, very good but point. but the key the key there is like Elizabeth and and I mean what I said to Elizabeth was like not to stand in the hallway just like out in the open, but if she needs to cast her spell to go into the hallway to cast it, right? Like, yeah. just to be, just to be clear, I, I, I wanted them to be like on the other side of the wall, not like in plain view of okay. anyone going through those halls, yeah. right? I'm like, just saying y'all knows that they're course, pretty safe, that course. they're relatively safe there. Well, yeah. I think they are. So I think they would camp for a bit, right? Yeah, yeah they will. Reasonably. Now, having said that, we don't know what happens turn by turn. We can't control anything, right? right. My point is just, you know... Uh, it's like, it is kind of all or nothing, right? Like in this scenario, it's kind of all or nothing. And I think the strongest position we have is where we're at, even though it is the most trapped we'll be. But that's the, that's the irony of it. That's like kind of the fun of it. Like it is really a death gamble in that hey, way. Ted, um, how do you feel about this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's out. He's free, baby. He has no worries anymore. <laughs> well, no, that's not entirely true. I, how long uh, does that spell last? I don't know. It's a, it's a potion. You should, so, yeah. So it's a. I, I rolled. I know how long it lasts. Yeah. Here's a key. There. Sorry to interrupt, Ted. Yeah. We can just say, "Hey, Ted, go go to Niall and Elizabeth and tell them what's going on." And Ted leaves. It's going to take a long time for a little spider to get there. <laughs> Fair. No. Here's the thing. Fair. I, I mean, I, and and David, uh, don't take this the wrong way. I don't think you should open that door and set up the alarm, like. The smart Sorry. move. The smart move was we just waited it out sure. until Garrod came to bed. You got it. You wanted something to happen, and this is a game, not an actual tactical sure. situation. Exactly. So, uh, and it 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 definitely kicked everything in the pants, and now we have to deal with it. And I think you're smart to sit there and just be like, nope, I'm not fighting these monkeys. Uh, if if they discover us, if they work out that we're here, fine. We go toe to toe, and we take out what we can. Go down swinging. Mort lives to tell the tale. Yeah. Uh, I, if that had happened, I would have really preferred to be a baboon swinging myself, you know, but, uh, that's fine. I'll be a spider. It is absolutely the smart move. Uh, no complaints there. So I think, um, we, you basically, we stay tight. We see what the bunkies do. Garolad's got to come. I think you're right. He's going to come shut those, that mush mushroom off eventually. And, awesome. and then, then we hit him. Also, as a spider, you can go into Garelad's room as a spider. Yeah, I could go in and just wander around and kind of explore and, and figure out maybe, oh, ooh, maybe I could find some cool shit. Uh, but yeah. I want to make I, a I would... promise to you, Ted, right here. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, the big thing that I'm actually now worried about beyond yeah. Darius dying is Laryl's cloak being lost. So I'm in the first turn, right? The first uh, use of it. I've got two more after this. I'll probably need one after I attack, but I'm going to save that third one and leave it unused so that 
if I die, which is extremely likely, you as a spider can go, you know, you, you run up, you grab the cloak as a goblin, obviously, you put it on, use it, and then escape so that we don't you lose that for the party. Does that make sense? I don't want to lose that for the party. It's well, too potent. It's too potent an item. How long so, is that? The, the, the last three turns? Is that right? Three turns, each use lasts three, turns, three turns, turns, and you get yeah. three uses out of it. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I agree. But you again, already got the want... pin, bitch. So don't think you're keeping it when my next character comes around. <laughs> Me or David are going to get it. <laughs> I was going to say I gave I gave the cloak to you, uh, the cloak to I you. Know you so. did. I know you no, did. Um, that was nice. But you can what, have it next time. We'll pass it back sure, between us. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I don't want to be uh, too cavalier. Obviously, we're in a dangerous situation. I think what's interesting about this, to your point, Ted, is like, yeah, we were motivating it to move forward by opening the door. Just as Which, a, in a meta sense. Now, yeah, in a meta game sense. David, that was that was a great move. Yeah, it's like it made things happen right there at the end of the episode. We didn't end like a bunch of chumps with our thumbs up our butts. You know, we did something good. <laughs> but but well, it, tactically, we I mean, we should have just waited it out. Well, and then this is this is this is why I think it's an interesting topic, right? To involve yeah. John in, which is like part of the triangulation of the conversation that we're engaging in is one in which we are we are trying to infer whether John is telegraphing that. Garrelad's not coming anytime soon or that John's rolling whether he'll come or not every couple turns and we just don't know and if he's telegraphing he's not coming anytime soon opening the door is the only option right so what I'm doing in that moment isn't just trying to motivate forward I'm trying to engage strategically with John I'll just be very honest with everyone and and, yeah, and yeah. figure out how he'll respond to that prompt because it gives me information right like well, hence why I did it right it's in yeah, other words yeah. it's not just like a well I guess it's all we can do. It's a, how can I get more information out of John sort of situation? Yeah. Well, rather than and yeah. make John put John on the spot to answer that. No, he doesn't have to. I'm I just don't think you should. I yeah. would say what yeah. I was thinking at that moment when he was like, okay, you know, Garrelide kind of comes down and then he wanders away again. What John was telegraphing to me was mm -hmm. that I am not going to hand you Garrelad. You right. are the players. You need to That's... go get him. Uh, well, well, the, Okay, where so, I would agree and disagree there. Well, John can speak for himself because yeah, he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I do what I do with with all of the off screen NPCs mm -hmm. and factions and stuff like that is I just extrapolate what they would naturally do based upon their desires and motives and how they operate. Um, Garalad is the kind of person, as you probably already de determined, that he um he has his uh, baboons do shit for him. Yes. Um, so if if um you know basically his obvious thing is like if he's up there in the ruby throne chamber in the hall of judgment and he hears the shrieker go off he immediately orders his baboons to go fucking check that shit out um yes. he is definitely not going to go go by himself right 100%. so so he, he did the smart thing and just stayed behind and he's waiting for the baboons to come and um tell him what happened now i did give you i was hoping that i telegraphed that there were multiple opportunities for you to stop and try to eavesdrop on what Garalad was saying yeah. or what yeah. the baboon, what the forum baboons were saying, right? Like they were always at a distance, but you were being cautious, which was probably smart and staying away, but you didn't, you didn't decide to proactively go and investigate to hear like what they were discussing and what's going on. Like that whole thing in the Western hallway, like what the heck is going on there? Right. 100%. Like, like the baboons got rebuffed, the Garalad got rebuffed, um, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, but Maybe, you know, they were sent, they were ordered down there originally by Garalad immediately upon him returning to his domain, mm -hmm. right? Like he didn't waste any time. He went right to the Hall of Judgment. He said something and those baboons were sent down there immediately, right? Um, and then he himself, after the baboons ran away, went down there to check it out with Cisco, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you know that he's the kind of person that that sends others to do his bidding, but he felt it necessary to go down there himself with Cisco, then obviously something that there to the West is of, of, of importance, right? Um, so anyways, I'm just, I'm just saying like, um, uh, I am not playing a game where, where I'm not gonna, like, it, like if your plan had involved Garalad coming back to his chambers for some reason, then I just would have, if that naturally would have happened, it would have happened, but I'm not, I'm not playing a game where, um, like I'm not going to hand him to. Like if if you had come up with a plan that handed him, handed him to you on a platter, I would have done that. But you didn't come up well, with yeah. a plan. And what I would well, say what, there. Oh, sorry. Well, it's I, that's what I really meant, John. Not like you know, 
okay, you guys are sitting there waiting for him, so I guess I'll hand him to you because otherwise we're just going to sit here and twiddle our thumbs. No, yeah. we. I was prepared to wait until it was bedtime and he would naturally come along. That doesn't make for very fun play. Totally get it. And I, and I could see that you were not going to accelerate his arrival just for our convenience. Correct, yeah. That's what I was getting at. And, yeah, okay, and yeah. So, so, David, please. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, y'all, y'all kind of engaged with it already. What, what I was going to say in response to Ted and, and wrap it into uh, what we've already sort of seen resolved was, yeah, like it's not, I think it's an interesting topic because not that we were doing this, but like sitting and waiting is not refusing the adventure if waiting is the the tool for success. And I think the instinct is to, especially if you're in like a more narrative-based game, to feel like you are refusing the adventure by refusing, for instance, John giving us that new information, as if John giving us that information was him telling us, if you want to do this, you have to engage with the terms that I'm giving you. I don't I don't read it. That, not that you said that that's the case, but I don't read that at all okay. as the case. I read okay. this as like a neutral environment in which John is giving us information. Whether we are enjoying ourselves or bored is immaterial to the fact that like what we're not doing is not making a decision. And I think this is really key because what it feels like is we're not making decisions when we don't respond to things. But that's not what's going on. We're making a very calculated decision absolutely for yeah. ourselves, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and, I, and and that doesn't mean it's the right decision, right? It but just I think means that the decision necessary. that you made is passive, which is right. which is which is fine. It's a safe thing to do. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the hardest thing to do is to not act. The, this the old, is the whole thing. Assessment. But here's yeah. the thing that is is actually like killing me now. The way John phrased that is that we played the little caution by not investigating the sound, like the conversation, right? But then we we did not play the big caution by setting off the trap. We we were like, it's kind of like a, a penny wise pound foolish thing. We we're like, eh, it's too risky to go over there and listen to see what they're talking about. But let's just set off the trap and just see what happens. <laughs> well, right? like, we're just like, I'll, ar- I'll, argue, I'll argue, I'll argue with you. I mean, I, I, I you're yes, I, 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 your point is totally well taken. I'll argue with you again, though. <laughs> our, our safety is predicated not on whether we set an alarm off or not, but where we are positioned. I know, I know. So, yeah. so by I'll, moving I'll, there and doing that, if we do get pe- caught, you are dead, right? Yeah. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not arguing. No, the point I agree with what you. Yeah. Is like fun. What I'm actually saying yeah. is like the way John phrased that just yeah. sent a cold yeah. shiver down my spine. Yeah, because sure, I'm like, sure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to, and to be clear too, like you, I, I'm very impressed with like the plans you came up with the way that you mitigated being able to be detected was pretty sweet because you've been uh, it, like you're nose to nose with some of those baboons and you were nose to nose with, with Cisco too, whenever he was down there. Um, you know, it's you, you, you played it out very smart with your invisibility and polymorph and all that sort of stuff. So it's a bad situation, but you, you, you handled it really well. So if you, if you did, if had decided to wait until Garrett wanted to go to bed, yes, eventually he would have, he would have retired to his chambers. Um, um, and then I wouldn't have belabored the point. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have like, taken that long. There is probably, in fact, there's almost a hundred percent chance that it would, I would not have time skipped immediately to Garrett returning. Like there's baboons running all over the place. You know what I, you know what I mean? Like, well, he, and he, I, he, I don't want you to get too deep in past tense here. Cause we may start the next session doing that, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not I, I just, just to, yeah. What, not to what I'm saying though is like it's it's okay yeah. to just say like I wait, and if sure. there is enough, um, and then I'll just determine like how much time actually passes, and we'll just skip to whenever the action t- picks up again. It's not a. It, this is not. This is not advanced DMing. <laughs> you know what I mean? This no, 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 yeah. no. It was close enough to Cisco to teabag him. Like, yeah, I'm just, okay. like I'm what I'm like, saying is is that just because of the events of this episode, I don't want you guys to think that you can't make. Um, uh, long term, you know, like a, you, you can't make decisions like that that appear boring on the surface. You know, they do what you got to do to survive, man. You know what I mean? Um, what the course, hell are we going to yeah. do with Matt when he comes back? Uh, I think he should yeah. um, take all the Play money Elizabeth. and open open an inn and <laughs> retire from this terrible life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's a good question. He might have to be hanging out back with the um, the retainers, maybe. Yeah. Um, Ouch. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then well, maybe he'll be your ace in the hole as a result, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you could make him play Elizabeth, but it seems unfair to not let him play his own character. But 
Um, no, he would, would, I doubt he would mind. Yeah, I don't think he would mind. But uh, no, he, he'll he'll play a PC. We got to stick to those. Rules. Yeah, I mean, there's not to belabor it further. I I'm very excited. Uh, it's a good conversation about like what an adventure is, uh, and I don't think it's over yet. But I might. Oh, it's not. It's, it's not. I think, I think there's super a lot psyched. of really fun. There's a lot of really fun and creative opportunities we still have. So I would not see the fact that these guys are calling around us as the door closing. I, I would I would express some dismay to discover that the uh, forearm baboons are greater than seven hit dice. That is uh, disappointing news, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I refuse to fight. If if we're in that position, I'm just running. <laughs> I'm running as fast as good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really need to tell you. They, you, being you one. You've witnessed it. They are not mm-hmm. nice creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, Guys, I'm going to tell you one thing, too. I am... 97 percent convinced that they are not under any kind of magical influence of garalad i am like 90 next 98 percent there's a possibility but they just love that fucking guy and all the other little baboons follow his example so yeah. maybe if we cut if we were able to kill garalad maybe something happens maybe something like maybe the little guys make their morale checks and run away but the big ones might just go into a killing frenzy because we killed dad and then <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We might not get out. Like just cutting the head off the snake might just piss off the rest of the snake. For sure. For okay. sure. I'll say this. I, I very point, very well taken, which is my biggest worry too. The information we have that make that complicates that is obviously the, the anti-magic realm. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Which is which in in of itself, like makes no sense if there isn't something affiliated with them. For him to be so dogged about, right? In other words, he, if he only extended that warning to Nyal while he was being manipulated and not the apes, that would be one thing. But it is a wide order, which tells us he doesn't want the apes in there. The other yeah. thing is, um, I mean, I hate to, I hate to like to extrapolate too far, but when we, when I posed as um, Isocrates when we were running the first time, and Tresco kicked down the door, right? And I was, what are you doing, you fool? You know, like, Garalad's under mm-hmm. attack, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, and this is the case with, like, most, even, like, the depression that he's exhibiting because Garalad's gone, it is not a natural amount, right? It is not a, oh, I'm bummed dad's out of town for a couple of days. It is a, like, I have a, like, supernatural emotional attachment. I mean, it just is in the way that it's we've we experienced it. Like, him being like, I thought Cisco might you know, go for him, for dad. I'm, I'm the guy, right? Says a lot about their capacity to still have internal divisions and have no ability to see Garrett as flawed, mm. right? I can be wrong, and, but like, I do think the the specific word choice is pretty significant in all of that. Is awakening be. animals still a thing in OSE? Because that was something that happened in AD and D and you could awaken plants, you could awaken trees. They would gain class levels or intelligence and stuff like that. I don't know if that's a thing in OSE. Like, if Garalad is a powerful druid and awakened the big baboons, right? So, and then they would probably love him. And then maybe going into the anti-magic room would be a bad thing, right? Because then it might make them normal baboons again. Or well, make them lose their intelligence, at least, you know? Well, we um, know that they're affiliated with the Thothian clerics. They were. Right? They yes, were. But, right. Which I only say because, like, a druid isn't a cleric. Right. Like if there's any sort of like uh, obedience to their like lore. Right. Or they're like progenitors, however they were created naturally or otherwise, like a druid wouldn't necessarily be like, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I don't know. know. It's all speculation. We'll find out. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Oh, hey, guys, I wanted to tell you, I was um, listening to episode one today Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. and uh the rumors that we got were actually really, really cool. Do you guys really remember at all what the rumor was for Kerbo Khan? We got one. It's, it's in our we notes. Did? I wrote them down. I wrote it in our notes. Hold on. That a mad wizard rules the second level and has an army of ghouls who gather like body parts and blood for him to keep him alive and that he pretends to be useful and then the ghouls drop and, you know, come and get you. <laughs> yeah, like, and everyone right. scoffed when I put a lizard in his mouth. All right, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a rumor. That's a rumor. It's, it's a, a rumor. rumor. It could be a rumor he sowed for all I know, which is an interesting well, thing. It's, but it's, I will say, I wonder if the second level part is is what we know. Another one, one was third. right. Another right. one is that they told us. God damn it! The rumors were like 
the broken head has a way down into the dungeon in their basement and you can go down there and it like, takes you to the first level. And we totally forgot about that. I know I did from the time that we, you know, we dealt with the ghost got murdered by like the other ghost <laughs> ran and fought the giant plant monster. We could have gone right to the broken head and just been like, yeah. got a way down or something. We could just nah. go down. <laughs> nah. Except that I, I thought we did ask them like right away uh, about getting into the dungeon and they played, they played coy. They did not tell I us about their own too. interest. Yeah. I haven't now, gotten that far. I'm going to have to re-listen to the whole damn series. Well, again. Not too long the ago. I discovered just... that like they, they, they had an entrance, but they only give it to people who they favor. Right. Yeah. And, we and hadn't apparently... done anything to, you know, that's a conclusion you drew anyways. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Anyway, my point being is, is like, I I'm sitting there listening to the first episode and I'm going, wow, we really like, I'm not missed things, but like the big giant entrance on the side of the cliff face, that has got the marble lintel yeah, and sure. rumor said it led right to the troll markets or something like that. Or maybe it goes yeah. to, you know, if, if that we, I remember. We decided, yeah. If we just decided to go in there, we, we, well, we would have, like oh, that, that goes to the form of set if you just want to make make that clear. I'll, I'll say I'll say this. We, oh, you Go first. Ahead. Well, we talked about it, and we didn't see a way up, and we saw the other way up, so we decided yeah. to do that. Yep. Just, yeah, just that's how that went. And I'd also say, in in our defense, not that it's a about whether we're good, bad, or indifferent, no, but you're on trial. I'm on trial. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's like there's a twofold <laughs> aspect of this, which is like we've been playing this forever. For oh, it's great, I and, love and it. that that alone, like a a fun, a fun part of being a Gary Con was people being like, "You remember an episode?" And I was like, "I don't remember." <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> that episode. I like that. Know how many? Like this has been years of me playing it. I yeah. wish I had the capacity to. I love that it was. It is a memorable thing, but it's like it's too much to track, right? I, I yeah, we could we could actually leave it on that. No, I should tell people out there that if you're making if you're if you're coming to the series new or you're re listening and you make a comment on YouTube and be like. When when you said this, what did you mean? You're gonna have to clarify because <laughs> <laughs> it's, been it's been a long time. time. It's been a yeah. long time. Yeah, it's amazing, I should yeah. I should binge it though. We, Sixty four episodes. Yeah. That's like 128 hours minimum. It's a lot. Group. It's it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of content for much. us. And thank God that um, uh, uh, a lot of you guys have been taking copious notes. But um, even with the notes, it's you still have to refer back to them. So it's um it's. Uh, it can be tar- hard sometimes, but it's good that we have some um, folks with good I recall. I never take notes, baby, but I'm always listening. I know. You yeah, have amazing is, recall, is. considering. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm, this right. is the game. Oh. No, what did you say, Ted? Well, I was going to say, this is the game of Dungeons & Dragons I always wanted to play, John. Nice. All right. For Score. Sure. Like, <laughs> seriously, I remember, I think we talked about this one time in a, in a, in a detox, is that original Underdark box set for Forgotten Realms. Sure, yeah. And it was these huge maps, and I was like, this is freaking great. It's a whole campaign just in one dungeon. And then they weren't, like, really statted out hardly at all. Yeah, Undermountain. Yeah, it was annoying. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was disappointed, and then this came along, and you know, thirty years later, and it was, it's awesome. This is yeah. what I always wanted to do. So, yeah, absolutely. There was the the issue I had with Under Even when I was a kid, when I got Under Mountain, I could tell that it was sort of a uh, the the, cru- the core of it was cool. Like every place that they had detail was really really awesome and flavorful. Yeah. But it got away with advertising itself as like this unbelievably complex with all this you know amazing stuff, and like half of it wasn't even. It was just empty, yeah. and it was annoying because, like, I feel like the excuse was that um, you know every dungeon has to have its empty corridors, or else like the 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 actual yeah. inhabited corridors aren't as quite as interesting, you know. Um, but Ardvul approves that you can have an extremely dense dungeon, and you can still have empty rooms and empty corridors and a lot of room to move around. Like, not every single room is is keyed. Right, um, there is some empty space. It's just I, I feel like I, I shouldn't be ragging on it. Under Mountain is actually pretty fun um, for what's there, but um, I don't think it holds a candle. Uh, in fact, I don't think any Mega Dungeon really holds a candle to Arden Bull. Yeah. Know, I, I've seen my fair share. So, but you know, the thing about that is they made that thirty some odd years ago. Like it was probably the biggest undertaking of that sort. It was. At that no point. doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, I, I should. I, I, I feel bad now that I'm ragging on it. Um, no, I, just, and it, I didn't mean to sound like I was ragging on it. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows this. This is something that I remember talking about with my friend Steve in like you know 
high school. We were just like, well, yeah. it was all shit empty. <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah. I bought it in high school and I was like, all right, this is cool. And I said, well, I can put some of my own stuff in here. And that's a ton of work, particularly, you know, when you've got homework to do and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, after like a ton of work and I had statted out like one tiny little section of this giant map, I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. I can't like, run what, this. What, what are you, what are we paying you for? Right. Sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I can't yeah. run this. Yeah. So um, I think it's too big to like get deep in because we're already, uh, we've been long, but I will say I can never know the intention of the authors, but it is an interesting reflection of like cultures of play in the sense that like, <laughs> Oh, I thought we lost John. <laughs> Probably lost. Yeah. yeah. For a second. Uh, uh, in that, um, if all of those rooms had been empty and I haven't read it, so I don't know. And there were like tables for generation and stuff like that the intentionality of leaving them empty in a culture of play where they want you to be ad hocing and building stuff like OD&D was really, really about that too, isn't about giving you too much. Like they don't want to fill that because they want you to be not studying out in prep, but like figuring out on the fly. I don't know that that's the case there, but like that's where those, like those tables become really significant. It's nowadays a good point. Those, those, those tools were in place in that product. But the problem is, is there was a, there is a, it, 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 like having that design as a philosophy uh, uh, abutted right up against um, the fully detailed aspects of Underground exactly. that that were there. So it was um, for like a teenager, it's very sort of mixed messages. You know, it's like you're buying 100%. this product and you're like, uh, like, oh, sweet, I could just open this up and run it, you know, and you can't. There's like a, a ton of work, you know, yeah. um, which is sort of like the difference dungeons. between like like B1 and B2, like B1 in Search of the Unknown was um really put your dm skills to the test because it wasn't populated like you had to like do that yourself but it was expected that you were going to do that b2 was all the work was basically done for you so um you know i i i feel like like undermount was sort of like a combination of both of those you know so it all depends on your your style it's it's fine no, it's I, mean, like, I think it's a good point is hybridizing can kind of confuse the message though right this is about communicating how to use the tools you're given and if it's not clear then that's that's the problem more than yeah I, I could be true. talking out my ass too because it's like it's, it's I mean, been like I'm 30 years since, I, since I, I, I've, I've got the box set like literally right here, but I haven't pulled it out for like 30 years. So it's you know, it's been a, it's yeah. been. A we minute. need to we need to update our tagline from the most criminally underwatched to talking out our asses. <laughs> talking our asses exactly. Uh, well, Pretending that's, like that's, we know things about every day. Baby. <laughs> that's every day, baby. Hey, when are you getting out of jail, bud? They letting you out tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> as soon as you post my bail, bro. Oh, sorry.